After last year's devastating experience caused by the spongy moth, the St. Clair County Board of Commissioners took the initiative this year, allotting $550,000 for the spongy moth spraying program. The cost covers the spraying of 5,100 acres throughout the county, areas residents had reported as being greatly affected by the infestation in 2021. The Friends of the St. Clair River collected online surveys from residents and worked with other county entities to devise a strategy. Kristen Lyons, the Spongy Moth Program Coordinator with the Friends of the St. Clair River, offered details about the moth's life cycle as well as the county's spraying program. Spongy moths are an invasive insect. In the fall or late summer, spongy moth adult moths lay egg masses. Those egg masses persist over the fall, the winter, and then into the spring. They hatch in the late spring as caterpillars. Um, they begin to feed in, as soon as they hatch. Um, they'll feed for about two months. What happened in 2021 is we had this sudden and severe outbreak of spongy moth. People didn't know what it was, um, or if they did, it had been 20 years since they'd seen any issues with it. They can defoliate trees or eat all the leaves. The defoliation can cause stress to the trees and also causes the loss of shade for the homeowners. What we're trying to do is prevent them from causing that major defoliation and the messes that they create. So we're reducing tree stress and stress on people. Yeah, the product that we use is Bacillus thuringiensis far cure stocky. It is a naturally occurring soil dwelling bacteria. It's all around us every day anyway. It's just that manufacturers have figured out how to produce it in large quantities and then spray it from an airplane. The product is not harmful to people or plants or pets. It is very narrowly specific to caterpillars only. Last fall and winter, I and our other staff and a team of volunteers were out doing the surveying of reports that had been made. And so we would go to homeowners' properties to look at the egg mass distribution and density to ensure that there were spongy moth out there and to see how bad the outbreak, or predict how bad the outbreak was going to be this year. We encourage all homeowners, even the ones who were sprayed, to utilize multiple methods of control. What that can look like uh, can be a barrier band, which involves wrapping burlap around your tree and the caterpillars will get stuck in the burlap. Another method is using a sticky band, uh, which can just be your ordinary duct tape turned inside out. And so the sticky side is pointing out and you'll wrap your trees like that and the caterpillars will get stuck on the duct tape and that will help reduce your population as well. The county has invested in an incredibly great website. It's stclaircounty.org slash caterpillars. So people can go there and take a look. Um, there's all kinds of educational resource materials. If you continue to experience caterpillar problems this year, please report that on the county's website. I just want to thank everyone who's worked with us over the last two years to get the spongy moth program off the ground and up and running. In 2021, because of the contacts that were made to our office and the MSU Extension office, we were able to quickly put together a program to try and minimize the impact, the devastating impact that these spongy moths had on over 5,300 acres throughout our entire county. Without the help and the reporting of people uh, letting us know where the biggest problems were, 
we wouldn't have been able to get this program off the ground. It's important to be able to be outside and the spongy moths are a very unwelcome visitor. And so moving forward, please continue to let us know if you see an infestation, if you see more activity than is normal, and we'll continue to monitor the program moving forward. Again, thanks for all of your help and thanks to the departments who, who made this uh, program work with between GIS and our administration, MSU Extension and Friends of the St. Clair River and all of the residents who helped us along the way.